Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good day wherever you happen to be. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a relatively simple exercise of finding the greatest value inside of a list of integer numbers. And I also want to show you guys exactly why we use optional values inside of Swift programming. And basically the idea is sometimes when we're writing out iOS apps, it just makes more sense to return a nil value inside of our functions instead of, for example, a negative one. Okay, so with all that being said, let me quickly dive into Playgrounds right here and show you guys exactly what it is that we want to implement inside of our function, which is going to be called function find greatest value in list. And what is this list parameter? Well, it is going to simply be an array of integers like so. And because we need to return some kind of value, it's going to return an int. Now, because the int value is required as our return, we will just return a negative one right here. So whether or not this makes sense is kind of a question that you have to answer. But first, I'm going to implement the function of finding the greatest value inside of my list by using a for loop. So let's see, for see number inside of my list coming from the parameter of the function up here i'm going to say print out what exactly these numbers are okay so with all that being written why don't we have an example function call right below just to see if the implementation makes sense so i'm going to say find greatest value inside of a list and what is this list well let's just make it the numbers of one two and three all right, so down here, you can kind of see it's very, very small, but you see one, two, and three. And now what do I want to do? Well, I want to keep the greatest value inside of the list inside of a different variable right here. So let's say var greatest value. I'm going to set it to negative one in the very, very beginning. And at the very end of the function, I'm just going to return that greatest value. Now this right here is going to remain the same. We still return a negative one for the function. And I would like to now go inside of the loop and modify the greatest value every time I'm inspecting the number. So how am I going to inspect it? Well, let's say if number, the number inside of my list is greater than the greatest value like that, I'm just going to set the greatest value to that number. And I think we can remove that print statement. And you see right here down below, we get the greatest value to be three inside of our list. So what if I change this to include a couple of other things like, let's say another one, a 10, a four, and then 200. So it's going to loop through all of the numbers inside of this list right here. And because the greatest value is 200 and we're constantly comparing these numbers with each other, it keeps track of it through the greatest value variable, and then at the very end, we just return it. Okay, so pretty good stuff there. And now is the question as to why it doesn't exactly make sense to use a negative one value as the kind of initial default value inside of our list, right? So let's say that I actually do this right here, find greatest value in list, and let's say we use an empty list like that. So what is that going to give us exactly? Well, it gives us a negative one on the right, which is kind of okay if you don't have any negative values inside of your function. So for example, let's say that negative one right here in this case means that I have an empty list. Well, what if I have the list of negative two and negative one? So that also gives me the greatest value being negative one. So you can kind of see that negative one means two things. It means we have an empty list and also inside of a list like this, uh, negative two, negative one, we also say that the greatest value is negative one. So that's a little bit ambiguous and this is kind of why we use the idea of optionals. So how do we modify our function so that we can use an optional? Well, this is very simple. If we just go up to the very top of the function name signature and for the return uh, return value let's just use a question mark which means we can return an optional now so how do we deal with this function now that we have an optional 
Well, I'm just going to say if my list dot count, if the count is equal to zero, like that, I'm just going to return a nil. All right. So what does that allow me to do? Well, that means that if I go back to find the greatest value inside of an empty list, I get a nil value right now. And if I go back to finding the greatest value inside of a list of perhaps negative three, negative two, negative one, I will get the negative one down here. And then if I include perhaps a zero, one, and 100, two, that will give me the value of 100 being the greatest value inside of my list. Now, there are some other optimizations that you can include inside of the, uh, the implementation of the function, but uh, we're not exactly going to go through that because uh, the important part of today's video is to kind of define why we have to use optionals inside of our functions. So again, because we don't want to return a negative one for an empty list, we instead will return a nil value for an empty list. And this makes our, uh, our function very, very non-ambiguous in terms of the return value. Okay, so let me finally uh, go through one last thing right here, one last little exercise. And you can see that uh, the default implementation for the maximum value in a list inside of the Swift language, you can use one, two, three, like that. You can just call max on this list of numbers. So you can kind of see the default implementation actually uses an int optional as the return value. So I'm going to hit that. And this right here gives me a three like so. Now if you command click into max, let me see if I can bring up the documentation. It says that max uh, finds the smallest. I think the documentation is a little incorrect here, but uh, it gives you the greatest value inside of this list right here. And then it says that if the sequence has no elements, it returns a nil. So that's exactly the implementation that we have inside of our implementation right now, which looks like that. All right, so that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I also hope you guys have a better understanding as to exactly why we use optionals inside of Swift programming. And basically the idea is sometimes we want to reduce the ambiguity inside of our programs. All right, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to download the source code uh, for today's playground, you can find the link down in the description below. And also make sure to subscribe to the channel for more helpful videos like this. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.